Welcome to lecture 21, which will continue on the topic of language. And we're going to start with a presentation on how our brains deal with the messiness of language. And we'll talk about the McGurk effect, which says that for hearing people, language is not just what you hear, it's also what you see. So language is both auditory and visual. We'll talk about categorical perception, a way for your brain to simplify which phoneme it hears. Then I'll tell you a little bit about the research on how we understand sentences, how we understand stories, what we need to keep in mind when we're having conversations, and lastly, the impact of culture and language on perception. So how does our brain solve or deal with the fact that language is so messy? Well, it does a couple of things. First, our perception of language is multimodal. In other words, it's both visual and auditory. If you've ever dealt with an older person or somebody who doesn't hear very well, you might have heard a sentence like, I'm sorry, I, I didn't hear what you said. I don't have my glasses on. That actually makes sense. You'll see in a minute. Uh, language signals are perceived when our brain simplifies things. Our brain has this thing that it does called categorical perception where we get rid of a lot of noise and we impose categories or we impose breaks onto sounds that actually don't fall in a category all that easily. First, the McGurk effect. The McGurk effect says that what you hear depends on two things, not one. What you hear isn't just based on the sounds that come out of somebody's mouth. It also depends on the movements of their lips that you see. So the McGurk effect tells you that for hearing folks, Auditory language is always both auditory and visual. Enjoy. Hi guys, Cliff Olson, doctor of audiology and founder of Applied Hearing Solutions in Anthem, Arizona. There is no doubt that you have heard about the Yanny versus Laurel sound clip that is taking over the internet. It is basically the audio version of what color is the dress that happened back in 2015. But there is another auditory phenomenon that occurs when you combine vision with auditory perception. This is called the McGurk effect. The McGurk effect is an illusion that happens when your vision changes the way you're perceiving a sound, even if that sound hasn't changed at all. The easiest way for me to explain this phenomenon is to actually show you. So here we go. Ba, 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 ba. 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 That is the McGurk effect. So what happens when I play the Yanny versus Laurel sound clip but give you different visuals of Yanny or Laurel? Let's find out. Yanny. 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 If you hear Yanny when you get the visual of Yanny, and then you hear Laurel when you get the visual of Laurel, then you are experiencing the McGurk effect. So part of the way that our brain figures out what other people have just said verbally is by using the McGurk effect, by looking at the movements of their mouths. Categorical perception. The way that we form different sounds is a function of, you know, where our tongue is in our mouth um, and when we move our mouths in, in different ways. Um, and one of those key parameters is called VOT or voice onset time. It's uh, the amount of time between when you start to say a sound and when your vocal cords vibrate. And by playing around with that, uh, delay, you can make different sounds. So it turns out that when I say ba and pa, my mouth is doing exactly the same thing. The only thing that differs is this VOT, this timing thing. 
Now, the timing can vary all over the place. People who speak slowly or maybe with a particular kind of accent will have some kind of timing. Um, and people who speak quickly or have a different accent might have a different timing. The way your brain deals with that is by saying, okay, any sound that I hear that has a timing in this range, I'm going to say it's B. And if it's in another range, I'm going to say it's P. And that's exactly what happens with voice onset time. Um, if the voice onset time is really small, we hear P. If it's longer, we hear B. So we deal with the fact that sounds vary or change continuously by just saying, mm, we're just going to draw a line in the sand. When we understand sentences, we need two things that we've mentioned in lecture 20. Semantics, which is meaning, and syntax, which is rules about word order. And if you have both the meaning and the syntax, the word order, then you have something called grammar which I'm sure you've studied in school. And grammar is the system of rules that allows us to communicate. Now, here's the question. As I'm saying a sentence, do you wait until I get to the end of the sentence to figure out what I just said? Or from the very first moment I start speaking a sentence, are you trying to figure out what I'm going to say or where it's going to go? And research addressing that question, do we wait until the end of the sentence to understand the sentence, or do we understand the sentence continuously? Researchers asking that question have used something called garden path sentences to get at the answer. So what's a garden path sentence? A garden path sentence is a sentence that starts out and you think it means one thing, but then at a certain point, there's a word that comes up that makes you think, oh, I've, I've picked the wrong interpretation of this sentence. It's actually something else. So the direction, you know, the sentence is leading you in one direction, but at a certain point you realize, oh, that interpretation is wrong. This interpretation was the right one. Let me give you an example. We painted the wall with cracks. We painted the wall, so far so good, with, okay, cracks. How do you paint cracks? And you realize, oh no, it's the wall that has the cracks, right? That's a garden path sentence. The old man, so far no problem, an old man. The old man, the boat. The old man, the boat. What does that mean? Oh, in that sentence, man is not a noun, it's a verb. Old people, man, which is sexist language now, but are controlling the boat. Garden path sentences are temporarily ambiguous. So what researchers did, what researchers did was to have people read garden path sentences and to look at how long they fixated or looked at each word in that sentence. And in a typical sentence, the amount of time you spend looking at a word, eh, about the same across the whole sentence. But in a garden path sentence, when you get to that point where you realize, what? People spend more time looking at the word, where the, the word that tells you that something has changed. So what does that tell you? Garden path sentences wouldn't have this difference from usual sentences unless we were trying to make sense of the sentence all the way along. So when somebody is speaking to you or when you're reading a sentence or when somebody's signing to you, you are trying to make sense of their statement from the very beginning. And part of the way that you do that is by considering both the meaning and the syntax. So for example, um, if I said the sentence, for example, if I said the sentence, the spy saw the man with binoculars, the spy saw the man with binoculars, who has the binoculars, the spy or the man? You don't know. But if I said the dog saw the man with binoculars, then it's clear. It's, dogs don't use binoculars, right? This is a joke, right? So only the man could be using the binoculars. So you use meaning to figure out what sentences mean. In fact, you're trying to figure out words, what words are from the very first sound that comes out of somebody's mouth or from the very first sign or letters that you read in a word. And how do we know that? Well, Michael Spivey's professor at UC Merced conducted a series of studies where he'd show people a grid like you see on this screen 
and uh, all they had to do is follow instructions that they got over headphones about where to look on the screen. And um, when the instructions said something like, find the candy, find the candy, what Spivey found is that people were equally likely to look at candy as they were candle when what they heard is find the k. So immediately you're, you're narrowing down k could be candle or candy. They're checking out both. So it's, you're not even waiting until the ends of words to figure out what a sentence is. You are using every single sound to actively and continuously figure out what sentences mean. So sentence comprehension and paragraph comprehension is continuous. We don't wait until the end of sentences. We don't wait until the end of words to figure out what's being said to us.